Well, good morning, church. How you doing today? Are you guys ready for an amazing day in God's house? Hey, if we've never met before, my name's TJ, pastor here at the Shore Church, and it is going to be an incredible day. Before I move into the message, though, um, when you pulled into the parking lot, you were greeting by some people in these incredibly bright t-shirts, our parking team. Aren't you always happy to see someone right off the gate, just kind of like waving at you? Can you give that team a hand real quick? Man, what a great group of people. Especially now that winter's over, they need all the encouragement they can get because, man, we're getting a little sticky out there, you know what I'm saying? All right, hey, uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to continue the series, Unscripted. And Unscripted started on Easter Sunday, and, it, and it's all about when life goes off script. Have you ever had those moments where you go, hey, life is going well, it's going this way, and it kind of throws you a curveball? Anybody have that happen to you? Yeah, we, we, I, we think we all have. It. And, and the question is, how do we react? What do we do? When life goes off script, and so we started on Easter Sunday with Jesus' disciples. They had an idea or a plan of what the, the, the cross or the, that Jesus' ministry would look like, that he would overthrow the Romans, that he would get rid of them and reestablish the order of, of Israelite people, and, and Jesus would be the king. And then he died. And they're going, this isn't a part of the plan. He resurrected and, and redeemed the situation as only Jesus could, right? And, and now he's not just the king of Israel, but he's king of the world. He's king of everyone. Uh, then last week, we, we followed this woman who was uh, caught in the act of adultery. And she was pushed before Jesus. And, and Jesus showed what truth and grace was in that incredible moment. And even though her life was going off script, God redeemed her in that moment. Wasn't that a beautiful story last week? And this week, we're going to go to the book of Mark, chapter 10. And it's another encounter with Jesus. And, and I'm going to read you a passage of scripture. And then we're going to go through it kind of in a more line-by-line -line method after we read through it one time, Okay. And, but I, before we jump into this, I, I want to pay, you to pay attention to something. The other two instances of, of this unscripted moment was where life went in a negative direction and God redeemed it. In, in this man's life, his, he has an unscripted moment, but it's, it's a positive moment. It's, a, it's, it's an opportunity that Jesus brings that no one else could bring. And so he, he sees the opportunity and he takes hold of an unscripted moment and has a positive outcome, even though if, if, that, if he didn't take hold of the moment, it would have kept going in a different direction. So, so it's not just a negative turn redeemed. It's actually his life is kind of in a negative direction anyway, and God gives him something positive. Does that make sense? All right, let, let, let's read it together and I'm sure you'll pick it up. All right, Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and he said, call him. So they called the blind man and they said, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now, this passage of scripture to me has, has been so personally important. It, 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 this passage of scripture, God has revealed so much to me personally, and I hope that you get to pick up everything that he kind of has spoken to me about it. But, but before we jump into the text, kind of go line by line, I, I got to ask you a question. The question is, why are you here? If you're taking notes, maybe you can write down the answer to that question, but it's, why are you here? And I'm not thinking like an existential, why am I on earth, what's my purpose, what's the meaning of life sort of question, but like physically, you woke up this morning, you put your game face on or your makeup or whatever it is, you did your hair so that people didn't look at you funny, you put clothes on so they didn't look at you funny, you got in your car, you drove here and you sat in a seat, you sang a couple songs, and now you're listening to me. Why? Why did you do that? Is it because you feel like you should? Is it because somebody made you come? Is it like, well, I just want to talk to my friends. I, I like the worship. What, what is it? See, see, the answer to that question is so, so important for us. Because if we can figure out why we're here, we can, then, then that motivates a lot, doesn't it? So, so here, here, here's an answer that I think all of us should be able to say at some point. I am here because I am expecting to encounter God. I'm here because I believe that God is the only one that can actually make an impact in my life. I'm here with anticipation, knowing that I've tried every other option in life, and this is the only one that works, and so I'm expecting God to speak to me. I'm expecting God to work in me. I'm expecting God to do something right 
in here. Does that make sense? See, if we don't come with a sense of expectation, what will we get? Nothing. So the question is, why are you here? And I hope you have an answer. I am expecting, I am anticipating fill in the blank. And that's exactly what this man Bartimaeus does. He lives with this incredible sense of expectation. And as we read through the story, I want you to look for this expectation. I want you to look for him as, at, at, through his eyes, even though he can't see, he has this mental vision that he has this expectation of what Jesus can do that nobody else has. So again, let's go to the text one more time. We're going to start at verse 46. It says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside, begging. Now the scene is incredible. There's Jesus, there's disciples, there's the crowd. But then the, the writer almost like con- subconsciously goes, oh, it's not even about them. He, he puts a, a comma there, and then he goes, and outside the crowd, not a part of the group, just on the side of the road, was a beggar. Now, Jesus, when he traveled, he traveled with an entourage of people. He had his inner circle of three disciples, the 12 beyond that, the 72 beyond that, and the crowds that followed Jesus, because Jesus was healing people. Jesus was the rock star of the day. Does that make sense? And everywhere he went, large crowds, hundreds of, and and perhaps even thousands upon thousands of people were with Jesus as he traveled through Israel. And there's a blind man on the side of the road who is not a part of the crowd. He was already there, and Jesus was passing by. And it's almost like The author almost forgot that he was the main character in the story, and they put a comment like, oh yeah, by the way, the blind guy was on the outside. I don't know how you came in this morning, but I think there are times in our lives, maybe you're there right now, where you see Jesus, you see the disciples, you see the crowd, and you're just kind of going, yeah, but I'm not really one of them. You ever been there before? You're you're the one on the side of the road going, yeah, that's great and everything. I don't know if I fit in here. I'm not really like everyone else. I came in the doors of the church and everybody was smiling and talking to other people. I don't know anybody. They, they saw people raising their hands and worshiping and clapping. I don't, I've never even heard music like this before. Or, or maybe you just feel like, I just, they're so happy and they have friends and I feel like I'm alone most of the time. See, if you've ever felt that way, you know exactly how Bartimaeus feels right in this instance. Because there are thousands of people around him, yet he feels isolated and alone. It's like the writer knew that, and he he put that little comma there just to go, oh yeah, by the way, on the outside was this man. What's incredible is when he hears that it's Jesus, something switches on inside of him. Look at this. It says, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. When he heard, because he could not see, right? When he heard that it was Jesus, how how did he hear? Hey, what's going on? What's with the crowd? What's with the people? What's what's, what's with all of this? Oh, uh, they they say, well, it's Jesus. The the, the Nazarene, the guy guy from Nazareth, is now coming down the road with his disciples and the group of people. And something inside of him opens up and goes, oh, I've heard of that guy before. Jesus! I need him. I need need that. And he goes from an outside person to becoming the center of attention. That's incredible, isn't it? That's not a natural mindset for us, is it? You don't walk into a crowded room and and feel like you're an outsider and then hear that Jesus is around and go, ooh, 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 pick me, pick me, pick me. Is that you? Is that what you do? No. But something inside him changed instantly when he heard that this wasn't just a crowd, it was Jesus. See, this is my theory of what changed on the inside of me. If I'm this man Bartimaeus and I'm blind, I would, I would try anything to get my sight. Doctors, ointments, voodoo, it doesn't matter. I want my sight back, right? Like If I'm this guy, I'm going to all the rabbis and the mystics, and I'm, I'm talking to anybody who promises that they could possibly have a healing, and I'm going to try it. But you know what he found? Still blind after all that. But he heard about this man Jesus. He heard about the miracles that he did. He heard about the power that he possessed. And right in front of him was an opportunity to call on Jesus. And he was not going to miss it. And so he went from just being on the side of the road to being the center of attention because he found out that Jesus was there. And Jesus is the only one. He was convinced 
that, 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 that could heal him. He was convinced that Jesus was the only one that could make that kind of impact in his life. And so something welled up within him, and that something was this, this faith that he had. He had this belief. He had this idea that Jesus could do something inside of him. Now, I'm going to talk more about faith next week in the message, but I want to give you, give you a quick primer on what that is. Faith is believing before you see it's believing before you see. And Bartimaeus has not seen Jesus. He has just heard that Jesus is nearby. And he just starts yelling in faith, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He calls out in faith. He doesn't know where Jesus is. He doesn't see him. He doesn't know. But in faith, he goes, Jesus, you're somewhere I know. Have mercy on me. And in my life, there have been times where I'm like, Jesus, I don't really know where you are. You could be over there, but I'm going to shout somewhere. I'm just going to say, I don't really feel it, but I know you're around. And in faith, I'm going to believe before I see. Have you ever had to do that before? That's what faith is. And that's what wells up within this man. And as his faith becomes more and more evident, look what happens next. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more. Many rebuked him. You're being just a little too zealous for this Jesus guy. You're, you're just going a little too, you're, you know, you, you're just trying to get attention for yourself. And, and why don't you just simmer down a little bit there, Bartimaeus? You, you've been, you're on this Jesus train just a little bit too much. Maybe that's your life. Like, like you, you became a Christian and you're starting to tell people about Jesus and they're going, oh, now you're a Bible thumper. That's great. That's wonderful. I don't think we can be friends anymore, right? Like you need to tone it down a little bit. You talk about Jesus just a little bit too much. You keep inviting me to church a little bit too often. You, you keep reading your Bible on those work breaks. That's kind of weird, you know? So why don't you just tone that down a little bit? Or Bartimaeus hears the criticism and what does he do? He just gets louder. It, it, it's like it fuels his faith even more. No, if somebody comes to you and you're a Christian and you're, and you're reaching out to the world around you and you're, and, you're, and you're showing them Jesus and you're giving and you're loving and you're, and you're showing the energy of Christ that he's given you and you're loving the world in that way, some people are going to take offense to that, aren't they? And many of us go, well, am I doing that wrong? Maybe they're right and we start to question, but Bartimaeus didn't do that. When they, there was opposition and people telling him to slow down and be quiet, what did he do? He got louder. And you want to know why? Because he already came to the conclusion that nothing in this world could heal him. So if nothing in this world could heal him, then it doesn't matter what this world had to say. It doesn't matter what they had to say because they couldn't heal him anyway. So if they're saying, you need to be quiet, I'm not really talking for you because Jesus is the one that can make a difference in my life. Jesus is the one that can heal me. Why would I listen to you when you aren't the creator of the universe, the one that can open these blind eyes? You're telling me to be quiet, but I believe I have faith that this man, Jesus, is the one that can open my eyes. So it doesn't matter what the world, and, and listen, we live in a world that wants to shut us up sometimes, right? Well, you're just, you're just being a little radical with your faith, man. It's not really politically correct to love Jesus. You know, you're wrong if you're a Christian. Jesus! <laughs> Have mercy on me, man. Like, I know I'm not perfect, but I need you. And the world can tell me whatever they want. It doesn't matter. They can't fix me. They can't heal me. They can't redeem me. They didn't die for me. It is Jesus. And so when I walk through this world, I lock my eyes on him. You know what's incredible about Bartimaeus? Is he could see something that nobody else can. And he's the only one that was him. He had a vision that they only dreamed of. He had a vision that saw Jesus passing by. He saw the opportunity before him, and he was not going to miss it. I wonder how many times that our physical vision has impaired our spiritual vision. Our, our mental logic and reasoning has impaired our ability to act in faith. See, he could not see, but he could see better than most people. Around. And even when the world told him, eh, you're doing a little crazy there, bud. Why don't you tone it down a little bit? He goes, <laughs> I don't care what you think. Because I see something you don't see. I'm living in a way that you can't live. Because Jesus is the one who can It does not matter what that, the world, the people had to say, because they couldn't hear him. It was Jesus. And he locked his soul, his faith on Jesus. And he called out louder and louder and louder. Now, the next little section here, 
is incredible to me. So he, he, he shouted all the more, son David, have mercy on me. And then I love this little line. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Now, this is a transition point in this story and one that seems kind of insignificant. But I'm going to tell you, this could be the most significant part of the entire story. Because when Jesus stops, it's not like you or I stop it. It's not like you're walking through the mall and someone says, TJ, and you're like, oh, who was that? Yeah, hey, how you doing, man? Like, it, that's not it. That's not the kind of stop we're talking about. The kind of stop we're talking about is Jesus, the creator of the universe. So he's a little bit better than us, right? Like, he, he, he's got some things going on. Jesus, it says in the book of John that in the beginning was the Word. He's talking about Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And by him, all things were created, and the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The one who created the heavens and the earth with words is walking down the road, and he stops. That's incredible, isn't it? To have the creator of the universe stop at the call of a man? And, and not only that, this was the last time Jesus was going through Jericho. He was on his way to Jerusalem. And within the next couple of weeks, he would go do the Passover ceremony, institute communion in the church, be arrested, falsely accused, crucified, put in a tomb, and raised from the dead. The very thing he came to earth to do. He was on his way to do that. So he's got this mission ahead of him, the purpose in the calling, and the, he's the creator of the universe, going to redeem humanity. And on his way to redeem humanity, a blind guy calls out and he goes, what you need? Is that incredible? What on earth, what kind of call could stop the creator of the universe in his tracks? When he's on his way to the cross, he just wants to go, what's going on, bud? What can I do for you? I wonder if we can call like that, too. I wonder if even the person that's on the outside of the crowd today could call on God, and he would go, I hear you. I think he would. But it's not just any ordinary call. Because I'm sure there were other people talking to Jesus, talking about Jesus. But I think there was some kind of call within Bartimaeus that nobody else had, some kind of vision that he had that nobody else did. Because when he cried out, Jesus stopped, unlike all the other cries. And I think it was the cry of faith that led him to that point. We read at the end of the story that Jesus says, Go, your faith has healed you, right? See, Bartimaeus was a man of faith. He saw what other people could see. He believed before he could see. And he had this Jesus man before him, and he believed that Jesus could do this. And when Jesus heard the faith in the call of Bartimaeus, he stopped. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? it says, so Jesus goes, come here, come here. So, so they called the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Time out. What were these people just doing? He was calling out, and they were going, be quiet. And now Jesus stops and calls them, and they're going, cheer up. It's your lucky day. You wonder why you shouldn't listen to people sometimes? Your people are fickle. The same people who tell them to shut up and not tell them to get up. The ones that are saying, you're just a little bit too radical are the ones that are going, oh, man, God really loves you so much. I've had this happen in my life. Have you? Man, I was, I was coming out of high school, uh, going into college. I had my scholarships lined up. I was ready to go. And God says, you know what, you need to... You need to go into ministry. I'm going to call you. And you're going to be a pastor. And I said, okay, God, I'm going to do that. I said, yes to God. And there were people going, are you sure about that? You know, you're giving up an awful lot. The, 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 you, don't, you probably don't really know what you're doing because you're, you're, just, you're just young. You're, just, you're 18 years old. You don't, really, you don't really know the voice of God, do you? And the same people that were at one time criticizing me for seeing God and acting in faith are now the same people that often go, man, I can't believe how God is using you. Man, you're just so blessed. God's really making an impact in your life same people. See, the crowd is fickle. And I'm not saying that all people are bad or anything like that, but, but I'm telling you right now, the same people that are at one time criticizing you just may become your biggest fans someday. But you've got to be sure to lock your eyes, your spiritual eyes, on Jesus. Just like Bartimaeus did. Come on, get up, man. Cheer up. He's calling you, dude. I'm sure Bartimaeus has a lot of things going in his mind, but he's too busy dealing with Jesus to give them a tongue lashing and a lecturing, right? And here's what he does. Another seemingly insignificant moment that becomes exceedingly significant. Check this out. 
He said, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. Now this is huge. Huge. Because his cloak, here's, here's what he would do. As a blind man in that day, he would sit along the side of the road, he would stick his legs out, he would put his cloak across his legs in front of him, and people would give him money in the cloak. And at the end of the day, he would wrap it up and he would take it away so that he could count it later and secure it and, and do those things. His cloak was an important asset to him. When he was cold, he wore it. When he slept, he slept upon it. Like, and it was also the method by which he collected money because he was a beggar. He didn't have a way to earn money. This was his source of income. So, so when he took the cloak and he threw it to the side, it would be like someone who's working construction just getting, giving away their tools. Right? So, so someone, someone who's a, a baseball player going, here's my glove, here's my bat, I'm not going to need it anymore, right? It's like a realtor kind of giving up their smartphone going, never going to see that again, right? Like, I just don't need it. I just don't need it anymore because Jesus is calling me. I don't need this cloak. And, and, and here's another significant thing with the cloak. These, these cloaks, a lot of historians and theologians believe that these cloaks were not just any cloak. It was a special government-issued cloak. Kind of like we have handicap stickers and things like that. This was a, a, a signal and an identifier that this man was indeed blind. He wasn't faking it on the side of the road. And that this cloak identified that, yes, when you gave to him, you could give in clear conscience that he was disabled and you were actually helping someone. You see, this cloak was his identity. It identified him in this group of people. It identified him as a certified dis disabled beggar. Yet when Jesus calls him, what does he do? I don't need this anymore. Are his eyes open yet? No. Not even close. He doesn't, he doesn't know that he's going to get healed, but in faith, what does he do? It's gone. Listen, can I tell you, when Jesus calls you, you're going to have to give up something to get there. To go to the king, there needs to be a surrender of some sort. And there's an old method of life, there's an old identity that needs to be tossed to the side as you approach Jesus. Because he is the one that gives new life. He is the one that gives new meaning. He is the one that leads us and opens our eyes for real. And there's nothing in this world that is worth hanging on to to stay away from him. You know what's true? I believe this is 100% true. I don't think after his eyes were opened, he went back and went, oh man, where's that cloak? I could really use that right now. He, he didn't go back to his old life because he didn't need it. Right? He, he, didn't, he didn't go back to the way he was because his eyes were now open. I wonder in our life, what things do we need to let go of so we can go to the king? What, what are some identities that we've been labeled with that God didn't label us but somebody else did? What, what are some positions in our life that we said, well, this is my security, this is my safety, this is my income, this is my whatever that I'm not really willing to give up right now? You see, unscripted moments aren't just about the negative becoming positive. There's taking all of the positives and they pass by. Unscripted moments. Jesus was unscripted for Bartimaeus, and he saw the potential. He saw through the eyes of faith, and he took off everything else, and he ran after him. That was an unscripted moment. And he came to the side in this profound act of faith. Incredible, isn't it? To see what he's done. And then he comes to Jesus, and I love the question. And Jesus goes, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. <laughs> and you and I are going, duh. Like, what do you, the dude can't see. What do you think he wants? Now, this, this seems like a crazy question, but I, you know what I think Jesus is doing here? I think Jesus heard the cry of faith from across the crowd. He said, call him, come, 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 come. What do you want to do? Jesus wanted to hear his faith. Not, not because he doubted it, but he just enjoyed hearing it. He just didn't hear, enjoyed hearing Bartimaeus go, Rabbi, I want to see. I want to see. See, his previous prayer was what? Have mercy on me. And so Jesus goes, let's just clarify this a little bit. Let me hear that faith one more time. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see Jesus. Now here's the challenge. What if Jesus asked this question to you? What do you want me to do for you? Do we have an answer? Do we have an answer that, that if, if this one thing changed in my life, it would change everything else? For Bartimaeus, he, it was easy to identify what that was. 
If my eyes were open, if I could see, it would change everything. What about your life? It goes back to the question I asked earlier. Why are you here? What's the expectation? What's the anticipation? Why, why on earth are you in this room at this moment? Is it for a moment like this? That Jesus is passing by and you know exactly the thing that if it changed, would change everything. We're not talking about, yeah, it would be nice if I had like a little bit more money if I got promotion. Right? Or if my car was nicer. And blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not talking about those things. Like what would fundamentally change your existence right now and the existence of those around you? What if, what if it changed in you would change everything about your life and you could then go change the world because of that? What kind of thing could God do in your life that would be such an incredible testimony that as you walk out life, you can just go, I used to be blind, I can see. You walk over this area, I used to be blind, I can see. Who did that? Jesus did that. It was the cry of faith that led me there and I encourage you to do the same thing. That's the question. What? You want him to do. That seems like such a simple question, but when you really dive down, isn't it hard to find that answer? What's the thing in you that if it changed, would change everything? That's powerful, isn't it? It's for that reason that I come into the presence of God. It's for that reason that I come and I gather with you guys. It's for that reason that I worship him and I open his word. It's with that reason that I have expectation and anticipation of him. He's going to change. Because every time he passes by, I want to be that guy on the side of the road calling out, this is it, this is it, right here, God. Please, I could use you. He wants me. I want to be that kind of person. He says, I want to see, and I love the response. Go. <laughs> this is an easy thing for Jesus. Go. Your faith is healed. And immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. His old life is gone. The cloak, gone. The, the criticisms, gone. The begging is gone. The blind eyes are gone. What does he do? He leaves it all behind and follows Jesus. How did, he, how did that happen? Because he walked and he saw in the eyes of faith. And because of this journey of faith that he's taken, he now he continues to follow Jesus. Can I encourage you? Jesus is passing by. Jesus is passing by. Will you call on him? In fact, I think Jesus was passing by looking for people like Bartimaeus so that they could call on him. He, he was in the area just for that purpose. Look what it says in the book of Isaiah. This is such an awesome verse. It says, the Lord says, so God is speaking to his people, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. No one was on the side of the road saying, have mercy on me. I was ready to be found, but no one was looking for me. He said, I said, here I am, here I am to a nation that did not call on my name. Are you ready to call on him? Are you ready to do that? Now, it comes with some stipulations, right? Bartimaeus didn't call on Jesus and then go back and get his cloak and lay back down again. You don't go back to your old life once you've been called. You, you don't go back to your old life when Jesus changes. You don't go back to your old identity. It's not, not, it's not you plus Jesus. It's a new you, right? But are you ready to call on him? This morning, I'd love if we could call on him together. Can you guys do that with me? Maybe you're here and you do feel like that outside person. You've never really fully surrendered your life to Christ. Today's your day to do that. For the first time, you say, Jesus, I've tried everything else. And today I see you, and I'm not going to miss this opportunity. That's your little prayer for any moment. For many of us in this room, we've been a Christian for a while. We've been lulled to sleep by the voices saying, that's enough. We can be quiet now. It's not really worth it. If you stay to the side and just continue your life, going to heaven, that's all you really need. Da -da 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 -da, right? Let's wake up our hearts now. Let's let faith come alive in us again. Let's see through the lens of faith, just like Bartimaeus did. Let us be the kind of people that can see what other people can see. To see Jesus in a way that they can. To really embrace him. Bartimaeus. Did you guys do that with me this morning? 
want you to do me a favor. Close your eyes, bow your heads, and we'll move around just a little quiet moment. We're going to pray a prayer, and it's a simple surrender to God. God, I, I'm getting rid of my old identity, my old life, my old everything. God, I am 100% locked on to you. While I pray that prayer, that's you, man. I want you to pray this directly to God, speak to God. But also, there's some of you who need to answer the question, why are you here? What do you want me to do for you? And this time, pray for that too. Ask him, what is, what is the thing that has changed that changes everything? So Father, I come before you now. And I know that you gave yourself to me. That on that cross, you laid your life down to pay the penalty of sin for my sin. Today, I receive that gift. Today, I, I pull the cloak aside. I throw it aside, and I follow you with my entire life. I don't need to go back to who I used to be. Because you, you are the only one that can give me life. You're the only one that can change me. So, Father, I want to be, I want to be led by you. I want you to open my eyes. And today, I, I pray with expectation and a belief that you, Lord, are going to do something incredible. Because I'm here for you. I'm here to hear from you. Thank you for this many things. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together for the people that prayed that prayer for the very first time. Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you prayed that prayer with us, we would like to help you on your spiritual journey. If you don't mind going to theshorechurch.com or emailing us at hello at theshorechurch.com, we can send you some information to start this spiritual journey of faith. And of course, we'd always love to see you in person at The Shore Church, 3375 Fruitville Road.